Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about my loadout for going and exploring the Labyrinth of Chaos. Obviously I'm not at the Labyrinth right now, but I've been talking in the comments with a guy and I think a picture, or rather a video, is worth more than a thousand words at the moment. Anybody else who may watch this might learn something interesting. First thing I want to show off is this ribbon. I found one of these so far in the Labyrinth and I have it equipped on mini. As typical for Final Fantasy type things, this ribbon makes you immune to pretty much all status effects, except for those three instant deaths and sealing, or grappling. The other equipment I have on most of my characters is pretty much not important. I did equip Puppy with my Genji armor. It, prevents a bunch of status effects as well. But aside from Mini, the accessories are the only important things. Well, Mini is accessories the only important thing there too. But these guys all have the second level of Berserk mask on. What it does is first of all make you Berserk and second of all give you two turns. It's a rare steal from the vaults in the Labyrinth of Chaos. So if you go down there, you should try stealing from the vaults until they start giving a few of those. <clears throat> but more important to my loadout is the abilities that I equip. Right here we go into abilities and you have the five types. The important ones in the war abilities are the HP boost and the Fukutsu no Toshi Kodoku Yue no Tsuyosa. That would be Unremitting Fighting Spirit and the Power of Loneliness, or something like that. They just provide some stat boosts under certain circumstances. These are work type skills, trade skills. Usually I have the SP boosted, stuff like that. But Minnie's not very important for much other than the fact that she steals a lot. Here in the magic skills I have Summon. She can always use that. In fact, all of my characters can summon except Puppy, who's in Berserk all the time. The defensive skills, these are important. This is Grit Your Teeth, and it lets you survive a hit that would normally kill you, as long as you have 30% or more of, of your life. It only works once per battle, but that, if you save your life once per battle, that's a life saved. And Magic Dodge and Magic Reflect. Mini, as a Phoenix girl, automatically gets the Revive skill. One of the Revive skills. The better one, I believe. So then there's the special abilities. These are really important. You can see over here I have unlocked five different regenerations. And every turn it'll regenerate that much of your life or MP or SP. And also very important here is the end of battle recovery. This you get from the adventurer class and I have it on all of my characters. It's very important because it will recover 10% HP and 1% MP at the end of every battle. But more importantly, if any of your characters died, this will revive them with 10% HP. Oh yes, Mini has Super RPL on in order to draw fire away from Puppy. And of course, doubling the steal rate. Here in Puppy, since Puppy's my attacker, she has all kinds of war skills on. Important here is the increasing the accuracy, increasing the critical hit rate. Again with the stat boosts under certain circumstances. And while Puppy usually doesn't do normal attacks, if she does get into a situation where she has to attack, double attacks. Trade skills, boosting her dexterity and her SP max. The magic skills I do make use of. Here we have flame and ice boosters here at the top because Puppy is usually using flame breath or ice breath and a magic power boost. 
Since Puffy's my attacker, she has her breath skills unlocked. And all the rest of these are not. Which button move? Which button was it? Alright. Button A on the X-Pad controller will toggle off the seal or unseal of these abilities. As you can see, only stealing and breath are available to her right now. Actually, I ought to turn off stealing. The reason why I keep her in breath attacks is because her breath attacks cannot be dodged and cannot be reflected. The only thing the enemies can do to survive them is be immune to either fire or ice. Actually, both. Dragon type characters can get these two. These two. Ice type breath attacks from the sea dragon race. So, Puppy can breathe fire or ice, and since it's unblockable and undodgeable, it always hits. The only thing the enemies can do is resist it. And there is one super boss that either resists it completely or a whole hell of a lot and makes Puppy attack instead. But for the most part, Puppy's breath skills will clear the day for me. So, defensive skills. The goddess's protection and the goddess's blessing, no, well, goddess's miracle, here will revive you at if you die in battle, it'll only work once. The lesser one will revive you with 25% hit points and the greater one with 50%. Here's grit your teeth again and more magic dodge and reflect. Again specials. Puppy has the end of battle recovery as well and regeneration of SP every turn. Puppy also has the breath of booster available at the very bottom of her list. This adds 15% of the da to the damage of her breath attacks. And Poochie, she's an adventurer for reasons I'll speak about in a moment. And actually she is less important than the other two characters. She has the summon ability and recovery booster here in the magic. Again, Teeth Grating and the Goddess's Protection. And Magic defense Deflections. Here she also has Stealing Boost, and a Battle Recovery, and SP Boost at, every, at the end of every turn. Also appeal to take the heat off of Puppy. And any Count Boost because I'm still in the regular world. Vanilla is my mage. As such, the most important thing for her is the magic skills. I was able to find a very rare NPC in the Labyrinth of Chaos. Despite all this time I spent there, I've only seen her there once, but she gave Vanilla a very useful ability. Uh, skill, I should say. Skills and abilities are different things. And this is what I learned. It's a attack and magic attack. So probably it can't be reflected. I need to test it a bit more. But it's flame type and darkness type. So it probably will hurt things that even Puppy can't hurt. If I see that NPC another two times, she'll teach me the other two skills that she has available. Which is something I'm looking forward to. Anyway, Vanilla's loadout has a flame booster because that attack I picked up so far is flame. This is the Mado Converter, or the Magic Power Converter. It will have her cut her attack power and defense power in half, but it adds half again to magic power and magic defense. Again with the summoning. Oh. This reduces magic cost for things. I don't know why I didn't have that on. So usual things in the defense and Vanilla also gets a Mawaza booster. This is the skill class that that skill I showed is under and it will also add 15% to her damage with it. 
Appeal again takes a bit of heat off the puppy. And since Vanilla uses magic skills, she has the magic regeneration equipped. Oh yes, I may as well talk about my classes and races. Minnie, since she does thievery, is a master thief class and an A beast race. Puppy is a battle master and a sea dragon. Poochie is an adventurer and Lamia and Boa. That would be a boa constrictor type Lamia, I suppose. And Vanilla is a sage and mage vampire. Really, the most important thing I would note down for my survivability in the Labyrinth of Chaos would be the insane stats I have. You can see here for Mini, she has lucky nines in defense and in speed, which means she always goes first and physical attacks are basically useless against her. I've been able to do this because I have a bot that can grind defense seeds or speed seeds or attack seeds. In the case of Puppy, I got her attack power up to a lucky nines. Right now I'm working on defense for most of the characters. You remember that ability I have equipped on Vanilla that halves her defense? Well, in spite of that halving, she still has lucky nines. As it turns out, the actual value can go at least up to 20,000. So, even having it, it can show the maximum effective value here. And that should conclude my loadout for exploring the Labyrinth of Chaos. I hope this solves any questions anybody has, and I'll see you later.